be fair is when all of our teachers who teach an elective class can air uh, about a 60 second commercial promoting their class so that they can get kids to sign up for their class. E-Fair is so beneficial. It helps kids have an idea of what the class is about, maybe a little bit about the teacher, what the kids think of the class, what the kids do in the class, things like that. So it's just information that you need so that you can make an informed choice when it comes to registration. I have no idea what to listen to. Why don't you tune into the E-Fair? Eh, why not? Are y'all ready, kids? You need to stay up out in the streets. What's the difference between each class? Art appreciation is a semester long, and it's an overview of art movements and history, and we develop different art pieces. Art one is a year-long class where we touch all the media and get more involved in the techniques. And intro to ceramics is when we build projects out of clay. What's your favorite thing about teaching art? That I get to share my passion of making art with all you beautiful people and get you excited to come to school and in my class. What is Outdoor Ed? Outdoor Ed is a year-long uh, hybrid class. It's half PE and half science. You'll rec receive half a credit for each of those. Four field trips, one each quarter. They're all real fun. It's kind of the highlight of the class. The class is centered around it. Uh, we have a trip to the Elk River, uh, a trip to Roaring River where we fly fish, and two hiking trips where we go out to Hobbs State Management Park and Devil's Den. And all of them are real good, good trips. Uh, we also cook out on two of the trips where everybody's going to get some experience using a grill. Thank you very much. Would you recommend this class? Yeah, it's a pretty fun class, you know, maybe like if you're lucky enough to get it. What have you learned in outdoor ed? We've learned how to uh, steer the canoe and to turn backwards and the dangers of which streams. and I'm the theater teacher and director here at Heritage High School. You can be in ninth through 12th grade to take theater. We have three different levels of theater and three through 12th grade to take theater. In fact, if you've never taken a theater class and you made it to your senior year, you, you can still take theater. Um, but I teach three levels of regular theater one, two, and three, and then I teach three levels of stagecraft, as well as one level of theater appreciation and ELA drama in the props and the scenery and, well, set. Same set is scenery, but um, the costuming, the makeup, we do all of the behind the scenes aspects. As far as the acting classes, um, we work on stage techniques as well as a little bit of stage combat, which you should never try at home without a trained professional because most stage combat is actually non-contact. Um, but we, we run over just about everything that you can do on the stage in theater as far as the theater classes are concerned. Now let's check in with some of her students. I'm Jennifer and I'm in theater. Hi, my name is Tanya and I'm in drama class right now. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Wilhite. I'm in theater right now. Hi, my name is Justin Bowden. I'm in uh, theater class two. I think my favorite thing in this class is just bonding with everybody and getting out of my comfort zone and watching everybody else get out of their comfort zone. Um, in this class, I like to act and make new friends. Uh, well, we have the fall play coming up, so that's going to be exciting. 
so fun. I love taking theater because I like um, the people that you meet. You meet great people, and it really helps you express your feelings. I think you should take it. This is intro to broadcasting. This is a class where I teach my students how to um, shoot video, how to edit video. We do uh, the e-fair. It's the first project that we do every year. And then after that, we just have a lot of fun. We make a music video. We write a commentary. We do a stop motion. We have about 10 different projects that we do after we finish the e-fair. So it's a great fun class. The benefits from this class are tremendous. First of all, you get an opportunity to use your creative side. Um, any kid who likes technology, who likes computers, who likes video, they would love this class. I love this class. I love to teach this class. It's a whole lot of fun. You want to sign up for Fundamentals of Audio, Video, Tech, and Film. I like that it gives you just some experience in the broadcasting film so you can you know, have a few works of art, per se. I think anybody that wants to just get in there and use a camera. Look at me, look at me, hands in the air like it's good to be alive. And I'm a famous rapper, even when the past are all crooked D. I can show you how to do -si do I can show you how to scratch a record. I can take apart the remote control, and I can almost put it back together. I can tie knot in a cherry stem. I can tell you about Lee Erickson. I know all the words. <laughs> HOSA stands for the Health Occupation Students of America, and it's a club for any student who's interested in medical events at our school. Do you have to be in the, in the class to join the club? No, you don't have to be in any of the medical professions classes to join HOSA, although it is encouraged because some of the things that we're going to be talking about in class relate to the event that we would compete in in HOSA. What can we benefit from this class? Well, if you're interested in the medical field, what HOSA does is we actually practice skills that are applicable to your career as a healthcare professional, and you actually get to go to a competition and compete across the state with different people who are interested in that career. So you can actually practice real life skills and then compete at the state level 
to show how well you've mastered those skills. Why did you join HOSA? I joined HOSA because my current academic focus is medicine, and HOSA has the potential to open up outside opportunities into that specific field. Why should other people join HOSA? Uh, other people should join HOSA because uh, you learn real life application um, skills um, into the, that field and uh, we have a lot of fun and there's potential opportunities for scholarships and connections to other facilities and programs. And we'd like to welcome everyone out to this year's teacher draft. This is shaping up to be a really great draft. Isn't that right, Money June? You're right, Nick White. I'm talking about cream on my crop. These are the type of teachers that can teach with their eyes closed. Wow, what a talent. Let's take a look at some of the prospect, prospects before this draft begins. First up, Coach Shaw. Now that pick is a keeper. Coach Shaw is on fleet with his four P's of marketing. Next up, Miss Grose. Holy cow, Mick, that's a resume. She definitely puts the fun in fundamentals. Taking a look around the green room, we come next to Coach Anderson. That Anderson, he definitely puts the pro in the programming. Now onto the wild card. Coach Sullivan has a chance to sneak into the top three. Dance. If I asked you to dance, would you run and never look back? Would you cry? I never saw this one coming. He's risen from a lowly AP teacher to an accounting extraordinaire. He definitely puts the fun and dysfunctional. Hit me with some highlights. With the first pick in the 10th Annual Heritage Teacher Draft, the Business Department selects Heather Grose from the University of Central Arkansas. <laughs> With the second pick of the 2017 Teacher Draft, the Business Department selects Coach Shaw from the University of Central Arkansas. <laughs> With the by far the best pick of this year's draft, the third pick is Coach Sullivan from the University of Arkansas. With the fourth pick of the 2017 draft from the University of Missouri, Coach Anderson. And with the fifth pick, via trade, the Heritage Business Department chooses you. Sports broadcasting is a class where students combine their creativity and love of sports to bring you awesome videos. Sports broadcasting is a very interesting class to work with your friends to make creative projects about the um, 
sports teams here at Heritage, and I just think it's a lot of fun. Um, I took sports broadcasting because I, I, I play sports here at Heritage, and I thought it'd be pretty cool to um, make projects about um, it. Students with a creative mind and like to have fun. You should take sports broadcasting because, number one, it's a lot of fun. Number two, a lot of kids have a big interest in athletics, and um, we just have a good time. And we put out good, solid projects. Product is really good. I'm proud of it. Uh, students that take sports broadcasting would be students that don't like to necessarily play sports, but would rather take sports that are being played and put them on TV or radio or something, telegraph. <laughs>